I am Pralyn Rupala, a BS Ed Mathematics 1 student and today I'm going to have my e-demonstration. So in this video, we are now in Chapter 8 which is Solids of Revolutions and Composite Solids and my topic in particular is Circular Parabola. So before anything else, I would like to give you the learning objectives for this e-demonstration. So at the end of this e-demonstration, you should be able to first recall a parabola, second, define a circular parabola, and third, learn about the properties of solids of revolutions, particularly the circular parabola. So let's begin with recalling a parabola. Can you recall what a parabola is? Are you familiar with parabola? How about a paraboloid? Are they both the same or they differ from each other? I'm sure you are all intrigued and are overwhelmed with questions. Well, to understand how a paraboloid behaves, it is important to understand first the parabola. Indeed, some cross-sections paraboloid will form a parabola. Let's picture up you and your friends playing soccer. When you kick a soccer ball, it arcs up into the air and comes down again. In that circumstance, the ball then follows a path. And the path where the ball is following is called a parabola. By definition in mathematics, a parabola is the set of all points x, y in a plane that are the same distance from a fixed line and a fixed point not on the line. The fixed point is the focus and the fixed line is called the directrix. By equation y is equal to x squared will form a parabola in a standard coordinate system. What the equation means is that the distances of a point on this line from the x and y axis are always going to have a special relation. What relation does this mean? The relation we are talking about here is that the y value will always be the x value squared. If one revolves this line around the y axis, a simple circular paraboloid is formed. Hmm, sounds interesting, right? Let's know more about paraboloids. So, what is a paraboloid? A paraboloid is a quadratic surface that has no center of symmetry but has one axis of symmetry. One type is the surface of revolution we get when we rotate a parabola around its center axis. But that's not the only type there is. Some look more like saddles. Every member of this family of quadric surfaces, though, can be generated by a moving parabola directed by another parabola. In geometry, a circular paraboloid is basically a type of paraboloid which is a solid formed by revolving a parabola about its axis. Therefore, by definition, a circular paraboloid is a solid of revolution or a solid. You might be thinking, what is a solid of revolution? Well, a solid of revolution is a three-dimensional figure that is formed by rotating a two-dimensional shape around an axis. In this case, a parabola is a two-dimensional figure. And if we rotate a parabola around an axis, we make a paraboloid. And that makes a paraboloid a solid of revolution or a solid. In a paraboloid, the line containing the vertex and the focus of the parabola is the axis of parabola or axis of rotation. Every section perpendicular to the axis is a circle. So in the figure, we can see the axis of parabola where it contains the vertex and the focus of the parabola. By definition, the circle here is located on the top because that is the section which is perpendicular to the axis. What's more interesting about a paraboloid is it is a one base and a two base paraboloid. Yes, one base and a two base. So let's see the difference between a one base and a two base paraboloid. So what is a one base paraboloid? So a one base paraboloid is a solid of revolution bounded by two parallel bases, one of which is tangent to the vertex of the parabola. So in the figure, if R is the radius of the top section and H is the altitude of the paraboloid, then the volume of the one base paraboloid is obtained by the formula V 
V is equals to 1 half pi r squared minus r. If you had noticed, a volume of a paraboloid or a volume of a one-base paraboloid is half the volume of a cylinder, which is if you could notice and if you could recall, the volume of a cylinder is volume is equal to pi r squared. Let's say, for example, we have to find the volume of a one base paraboloid having a diameter of 10 cm and a height of 12 cm. So, in this problem, we have the given, which is D, the diameter, which is 10 cm, and H, or the height, which is 12 cm. Since the formula only needs a radius, we only need half of the diameter. And the half of the diameter is 5 cm. So we only get the radius, which is in this case is 5 cm. Using the formula v is equal to 1 half pi r squared times height, you have to plug in those given numbers to the given formula and then that will result to v is equal to 1 half. 5, 5 squared times 12. And then if we simplify, 1 half, 5, 25 times 12. And then if we simplify again, which is B resulting into 1 half, 5, 25 times 12 is equal to 300. And then if simplified again, we will get 155. And then 150 times pi is equal to 471.24 centimeter cubed. Therefore, the volume of the paraboloid is 471.24 cm3. On the other hand, let's talk about a two-base paraboloid. So what is a two-base paraboloid? A two-base paraboloid is a solid of revolution bounded by two parallel bases, whose bases are circular sections of the parabola. In the figure, if A is the radius of the upper base, B is the radius of the lower base, and H is the altitude of the paraboloid. Then, the volume of the two-base paraboloid is obtained by V is equal to 1 half pi H times A squared plus B squared. Let's say, for example, we have a two-base paraboloid who has an upper base of 9 inches, a lower base of 5 inches, and a height of 11 inches. So in solving, we have to list first the given, which are A is equal to 9 inches, B is equal to 5 inches, and H is equal to 11 inches. So we have to plug in those given numbers into the formula, which is V is equal to 1 half pi H times A squared plus B squared. And then that will result to V is equal to 1 and a half pi H is equal to 11, so we have to put the 11, and then A is equal to 9 squared plus B is equal to 5, so we have to square the 5. And then simplifying, we get the volume is equal to 1 half pi times 11, and then 9 squared is 81 plus 5 squared, which is 25. And then we added 81 plus 25 is equal to 106. So, we have to simplify it again, and then we will get volume is equal to 1 half pi times 1166. And then simplifying it and dividing the 1166 by 2, we get a 583 pi. And then 583 times pi is equal to 1831.55 inches cubed. Therefore, we obtain the volume of the two-base paraboloid, which is 1831.55 inches cubed. Can you already see the distinction between a one-base and a two-base paraboloid? To make it clearer, here is the figurative comparison between the two. So now we're done with the volume of paraboloids. Let's then talk about where we can apply these concepts of paraboloids. So here is the application of paraboloids. Circular paraboloids are often used in mirrors and antennas such as the satellite antennas you often see outside of buildings. 
This is because each of these cup-shaped surfaces has a focal point on an axis which reflects light into a parallel beam parallel to the axis. Waves of light or other energy that hit the inside of the paraboloid will also be concentrated at the focal point. Now, is it already clear to you the concept of a circular paraboloid? Let's test your understanding by leaving you with these problems. Have you solved it? Let me know by leaving it on a comment box and I'll notify you whether you ace it or not. Before I leave, always remember the quote that says, Life may be tough today, but always remember that the world is revolving and tomorrow you'll make your sunshine. Thank you for watching this e-demonstration. This is Pride and Ripala signing off as your e-demonstrator.